go. The wind pretty much calm right now. It was blowing briskly out toward left field earlier, but right now not much wind at all. Chafin rocks and fires, and Butte takes a strike. There you go. That's the way you start off an, a, a game, throwing a strike. This junior is from Riverside, California, hitting 433. This is kind of a rebuilt Houston squad. They have, they're very athletic and versatile, three to four players that can play a different position. There is no returner from last year, Lynn, that is playing in the same defensive position. So a remake for the Cougars, and they've been good at doing it so far. Two balls and a strike to Butte. She does not wear batting gloves. And that's a rarity in today's game. Here's the pitch from Chafin. Butte swings and whacks it foul. Two balls, two strikes on the leadoff hitter. Thomas will follow and then Cantu. The make it happen pitch at 2-2. Swing and a foul back and Chapin tried to get the inner part of the plate. Once again, the 2-2 pitch, low and away. Just fills it up after she started the game off with a strike. There's Kristen Vesley in her eighth season as Houston head coach, approaching 200 wins. She played at Oklahoma. She was an All-American in Oklahoma. And listen to this tie, Howard Dobson who was the hitting coach at Oklahoma at the time, was her coach. There's a lot of connections between these two dugouts tonight. There is. Beth Tarina spent many years there as a pitching coach for the Cougars. Butte with a three ball, two strike count. A lot of pitches by Chafin early. Butte lines it to the left side. Taylor Pleasance takes one step to her right and makes the catch. Butte is advising Kennedy Thomas what she saw out of Chapin. He's passing the bat and sharing information. Here's LSU defensively. Newland, Briggs, and Rudity in the outfield from left to right. Coffee and Pleasance, the veterans on the left side of the infield. Daniel is getting the start at second base. Gutierrez is at first. Bergeron is catching and Chapin is pitching. And I think Daniel, that's the first time we've seen her start at second base this year. She is starting in place of Carly Petty. Tom Kennedy Thomas, the left fielder at the plate, two strikes. Thomas started every game either in left field or center field. She's a catcher and she's a cow transfer. Last time the Cougars played in Baton Rouge was the 2018 regional that you and I did. Might have been the last regional we did. Thomas tried to bluff her way to first base. One ball, two strikes, one out. We've just started. The Cougars of Houston, the Tigers of LSU. Chapin rocks and delivers. Liner foul left side. These teams have played 10 times. LSU has won seven of those. Seven of the 10 games have been played in Baton Rouge. And as you just mentioned a bit, the last time these teams met, was in 2018 LSU winning a splendid game, one nothing in the NCAA regional. That comes in tight. Hall of Fame coach of Ed Gerard and Lynn Rollins with you. We play in the top of the first inning. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Bases are empty. 
Houston is trying to send LSU to its first loss of the season after 10 wins. We talked we talked about the Cougars being a rebuilt uh, team. They have a rebuilt coaching staff. Nadia Taylor played at Texas, phenomenal player. Louisiana was born in Louisiana. Chafin delivers the 3-2 pitch. And it's hacked foul. These first two batters have really made Chafin work. They have, and they've, uh, they've put some nice swings on some good pitches. 15 pitches already have been offered. And Thomas remains alive with a 3-2 count. This Cougar staff is comprised of three former Big 12 players. That changeup freezes Thomas, and she's called out on strikes. And she didn't even look back. She just trotted off to the dugout, knowing, knowing that she had been frozen. So Chafin, after working hard, throws a soft pitch and gets Thomas looking, and here is Bree Cantu. Cantu is a transfer from UT, as in Texas, Houston native. And is she off to a hot start, 15 for 30 at the plate. No question, she's the most consistent hitter for the Cougars. And she leads in home runs with four, and 24 runs driven in already. Seven of Cantu's 15 hits have been extra bases including four home runs, but 24 driven in in 12 games. That's Taylor Pleasance like. The 1-1 one -one pitch looped towards second base. Sierra Daniel backpedals and she's got it. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Chafin in the top of the first against Houston. LSU is batters again for the Tigers. Smith in the circle for Houston. Curve, a rise, and a change. Her range is 60 miles an hour for her fastest pitch, and she'll throw her change up at 53. The first seven batters are left-handed for LSU. So is Daniel hitting ninth. The only right-handed batter is Bergeron. 2-0 to Danica Coffey. Her average has risen to 321. She is among six Tigers who have started each of the 11 games, this being number 11. The Tigers are 10-0. And, and Coffey has been a mainstay at the top of the order the last few years. The 2-1 pitch to Danica Coffey, a senior third baseman. That is upstairs, not close. Coffey has played slightly as an opposite field hitter and a bit deeper than most leadoff batters are played. She's got some pop to her bat. Smith's got kind of a, got a different delivery here. Coffee hits it high and hits it deep. This is headed to right center field. It is up into the bleachers. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Danica Coffee opens the game with her second home run of the season. And as deep as the outfielders were playing, it was not deep enough. Didn't I say she had good pop in her back? Yes, you did. She, that pitch is way too much on the white and Coffey jumped all over that. And a swing sweeter than a purple popsicle. She was percolating. So Coffey on the first hit of the game provides the first run, her second home run of the season. And up steps Briggs. Typical the Tigers, they kind of they start quick and fast. On the fifth pitch that Coffey saw, she drives it into the right center field bleachers. And it was a curveball, and as we've said a million times, it's the ball that goes over the fence if it does not move through the zone. The 
was a good looking pitch there. Smith's not real happy. She thought maybe she had a strike on that pitch. Danica Coffey still celebrating in the LSU dugout with her teammates. And the 2-0 from Smith. That bends a little outside. Watch this delivery by Smith. It, it is a bit unusual. There's a hesitation in it. Right now, everything is conventional. Got to find your timing on deck and in the dugout. Now she raises, stops at the waist, then kind of rocks a little bit and hesitates and then brings it on. And does a, and does a good job of hiding the pitch. But she has fallen behind Briggs, three balls and a strike. Taylor Pleasance is on deck. That's upstairs. So Briggs follows Coffey's home run with a base on balls. You know, that when you look back over the course of a season or two at the on-base frequency of Coffey and Briggs at the top. LSU off to a good start on the leadoff home run by Coffey. Briggs at first after a walk, and here's Pleasance. Ball one. Here's another crazy fact about this Texas Houston team, this Houston Texas team. There are no returners mm. as pitchers. These Brand are new, all huh? new starters. All new arms. Pleasance sends it to left field high in the air. The left fielder is circling. And the catch is made by Thomas. So Pleasance flies to left field. And that is the first out of the inning. It brings on Raylene Gutierrez. Raylene is having a year so far. The pitch rips the outside edge. That's the one Smith had been looking for. Had to just make a small adjustment to get that call. Gutierrez is a team leader with four homers. The difference between last year and this year early has been remarkable, and there's another base hit into right field. And we've said it before, she worked really hard in the offseason to become bigger and stronger. That's her 13th hit, and it leads the Tigers. She's second on the team with 13 driven in and leads in home runs with four. Here's Allie Newland. Batting a solid 320 through 10 games. 10 runs driven in. Same that hole. ground ball goes into right field. Same Here hole. comes a runner to the plate. The throw cut Ooh. off on the infield. Was there a play? I'm not sure. It would have been close. And then the, lead, the trailing runner would have gone to second. Let's see here. What do you think? Well, that wasn't that great an angle to tell. <laughs> well, it's been a good start offensively for the Tigers. A leadoff home run by Coffey, a walk to Briggs, a one out single by Gutierrez. A one-out RBI single by Newland. Runners on the corners. Well, no question, this Tiger team, this offense is on fire right now. Two runs home and a chance to get some more. And the good thing for the Tiger team is they've come from behind in probably three or four games already this season. So there's no panic if they get behind, but in this case, they're not. They have been quick, fast, quick starters offensively. You always want to score first, put the pressure on the other team. Rudity hitting a couple of ticks above 300. She's got eight base hits. Two homers, two doubles, and a triple. As we talked about the parade of lefties. The 2-0 pitch. That's off the plate. 
The fewest left-handed batters that LSU has used in a game this year is seven. And more often than not, they've used eight. Here's the 3-0 pitch. That's ball four. A minimum pitch pass to Rudity, and the bases are loaded for Hannah Carson. So a home run by Coffey. Briggs walked. Pleasant's flied out. Consecutive singles by Gutierrez and Newland. And now a walk to Rudity. The bases are FOT, full of Tigers. Can't tell if the bullpen is active for the Cougars. Carson hitting 438. Now this is only her seventh start, but she's seven for 16. Tigers are doing just, from what I've seen, what we've called, just doing a much better job of swinging at strikes. This fly ball is lifted very high into right field. The runner at third tags. Here comes the throw. Runner oh. reverses, and now they get a safe call at third, but there's a runner hung up between second and third. And there's the tag out. A base running mistake by LSU retires the side and it World Series coach Yvette Girard. I'm Lynn Rollins. And we've had beautiful weather here today. Temperature in the mid 70s at its peak this afternoon. Not a cloud in the sky, not even a little trace of meringue. I don't like meringue. <laughs> Just thought I'd tell you. Taria Coleman, Michaela Nita, and Jasmine Rollin will bat here in the second inning. Raylan Chafin working with a 2 0 cushion. She Col Coleman is a returning all region, versatile shortstop, catcher, or third. And she came from uh, OU, Oklahoma. So she'll play some shortstop as well as catcher? Not at the same time. Of course not. Unless she's an octopus. <laughs> Now that would be a story. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be a fun game to call? For those of you who might be keeping a scorebook, we are attempting to figure out all the assists in the rundown and the pickle play. It was 9 2, 6, 4, 5. And it truly blew up the inning for LSU. Chafin went upstairs and so did Coleman and couldn't get it. Two strikeouts for Chafin. This Houston team comes in with some gaudy batting averages. We'll start at the top. How about this event? 433, 545, 500, 375, 360, 405, 444. 375 and 333. Holy cow. The worst hitter is batting 333. <laughs> right now, though, I don't have a hit yet. Coach says this freshman has a calm head, mature and calm head. Chafin has retired the first four Cougars. Swing and a miss. She goes upstairs, and Nita couldn't get it. Man. That's two consecutive strikeouts on pitches that were just rising out of the zone. Yeah, not too much good, good comes from that swinging at that pitch. Good for Chafin. Chafin came into the game with 15 strikeouts in 16 and two-thirds innings. So far... The Cougars can't hold off on that rise ball. She has struck out three of the first five batters she's faced. Here's Jasmine Rollin with two out. Rollin hitting 4.05. She's got 15 base hits. She's two a, triples, a double, and a home run. She's a six year senior. Started at Missouri, went to Arizona State, and is now at Houston. Again, after this year, we won't be saying that anymore. That used to never happen, did it? No. Those players that are six-year 
players are going to stay in record book books hopefully forever. We well, never... many of them have taken advantage and have advanced degrees, Absolutely. which is terrific. Absolutely. But think about it. They can stay in the record books forever. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we never have this situation again. There might be a lot of asterisks asterisk in the yeah. record book. The 2-1 pitch. That burns the edge for a strike. I know you don't believe in it, but the Tiger catchers are working hard back there. Bajeron framing that pitch, making themselves small. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Came inside. That's a good pitch selection. That's good movement of the ball, pitch to pitch. Up, out, in. Chafin has looked better in this short two innings than she did in the first in the game she just finished. She has, and she was pretty darn solid working three innings of relief to get a save in the first game. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. She struck out the side. She has fanned four of the six batters she's faced at event 22 Baylor. And of course, that doesn't include number seven LSU tonight, but uh, there's nothing easy about the Big 12. That's a murderer's row of opponents. Well, it'll get easier after Texas and Oklahoma leave to come to the SEC. I am looking forward to seeing the Longhorns Ooh. and the Sooners. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That will, this park will draw some crowds when those two teams come to town. One ball, one strike on sophomore catcher Macy Bergeron. She's from Rain, where they hold the Frog Festival. We don't want frogs, we want crawfish. The 1-1. One, one. Loop toward the shortstop, and Lorenzo is there. Kind of fisted that ball. So a humpback liner to the shortstop for the first out, and here is Sierra Daniel getting the start at second base. I bet I believe this is the first time we've seen this LSU lineup to, uh, this year. It has, no question. You and I might not be the first time it's happened in the season, but it's the first time we've seen it. Well, I think it's the first time it has occurred in the season, and this is the 11th game. You're more than likely right, Lynn Rollins. Daniel at the bottom of the order. That's a strike. Daniel gets it down. It's behind the plate for a foul ball. And Blue was on that immediately calling it foul. Get a replay of this. Bounces back. When she touches it, it's foul. The one, two. Line to the second baseman. She has to lean to get it. Lair Butte makes the play for the second out. And that's the second time she's gotten robbed in her last two at bats where she's hitting the she's hit the ball well. But it's right at somebody. Now here is Coffee who opened the game with a home run into the right center field bleachers. Coffey tries to bunt her way aboard. How about that? She Let's go back and look at this first, uh, first inning swing. No doubt about it, where that ball lands. And then she comes back and shows bunt and could beat it out. How versatile can you be? The 0-1. That steered outside. And now she's, you know, showing the slap. And she hit that home run. She stood still and she didn't slap it over the fence. She pounded it over the fence. That will move the count in the favor of Shelby Smith. 
One ball, two strikes, two outs. The bases are clean. Briggs is on deck. Coffee chops it up the middle. And there will be no chance to get the lightning swift Danica Coffee. So a home run and an infield hit. What a weapon she is as the leadoff hitter. You've said it many times. If it bounces twice, it's almost impossible to throw out Coffee. Here's Briggs who walked and scored on an RBI single by Newland. I like to point out things to teach little girls. You watch Coffee lead off the base. It's always aggressive. It's the same lead every time the ball is delivered. She's in that sprinter stance. Briggs hits one deep to left field, but it cannot get over the head of Thomas as she makes the catch. So a couple of pretty well hit balls in the inning, not much to show for it. And we go to the third, LSU two. You're at some times of the year when the wind is blowing in from center field. Right now it is calm. It was whistling out toward left field earlier today. Yesterday it was blowing in with gusto from center field. Here's Shelby Smith. She's a two-way player, not only pitches, but also hits. Flags she, are, are flat now after two days of, as you said, windy weather. Smith hitting 444. She's four for nine with three driven in. And what a lethal offensive lineup this can be for Houston. As we mentioned before, the lowest batting average among the starters is 333. The highest is 545. Coaches were convening with themselves in the dugout trying to figure out how to help their team from swinging at balls in their eyes. And then they had a big huddle with their team before they went on offense here. Let's see if they can make some adjustments. Well, Chafin has induced swings on high pitches. She's got four strikeouts, including fanning the side in the second. But she's behind three and one. Smith has laid off a couple of rise balls, and that one gets a piece of the outside corner. That's well delivered. Stepping in the bucket a little bit with that front foot. Chafin has a good curveball. The 3-2 pitch outside, that's the first base runner. And that's what she tried, but steered it a little bit too much off the plate. And so the tying run comes to the plate every time Houston gets a base runner. We play in the third. Take a good look at that Houston uniform. Its colors, the official colors, are scarlet red and albino white. What? What? Well, there's a story behind the color selection. We'll try to get to it as we go. Bunt to Coffee, picks it up, guns it. Second baseman covering. Daniel got there. And Coffee cuts down Jordy Wilkins on a 5 4 put out on the bunt, a sacrifice bunt. Smith moves up into scoring position. Doing her, doing her job, but Coffee is just cat quick. It gobbling up those bunts. Her play at third base defensively it's, has it's remarkable. improved to the star level after not playing third base at all prior well, to a couple of years ago. I mean, you start your career on the collegiate level at third for a you know top 10 program. Paige Hulsey, the right fielder batting ninth. Runner at second base, one out. So scarlet red for Houston represents, and I quote, the blood of royalty that was spared due to the timely arrival of Sir Hugh and spared due and, and the blood that is the life source of the soul. Now, if that isn't poetic, I don't know what is. Coffee lets that one roll foul. And weird. 
I don't <laughs> I don't know who Sir Sir Hugh is. I <laughs> know what does that have to do with Houston Cougars? Well, we will find out. What's Albino that? white denotes, and I quote, the purity and perfection of the heart, mind, and soul, engaged in the effort to serve faithfully that which is by right and reason justfully served. Well, Sam what? Houston. Sam Houston was Sir Hugh, the liberator of Texas. Oh, he was. Oh, I never heard that before. I do say what in the Sam Houston's going on out here a lot. In fact, a little kid just the other day asked me, who is Sam Houston? You're kidding. He was like three. Oh, okay. My daddy used to say that a lot. What in the Sam Houston's going on here? I don't know what you just read. I was just quoting from the website of the University of Houston. I know. And I'm sorry if all the Cougar fans have offended you, but that's kind of really out of left field. That oh, what a play on the backhand side by the young second baseman, Sierra Daniel. She made it look easy. It uh, was not. How about that? First, I thought maybe I heard catcher interference, but evidently I didn't. This is not an easy play. And she turned it in with uh, a very steady effort. Back to the top of the order in the ever dangerous Lair, L-A-I-R, Butte, B-E-A-U-T-A-E. How much you want to bet all that that you read about their, um, I guess history, whatever, their mm -hmm. motto? <laughs> I bet none of those softball players have ever heard that before. The 1-0 pitch. That's a beauty. If you can live right there, you're going to be really good all the time. Yeah, and if you were a guy, you would make millions of dollars. You're right. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Runner at third, two outs. That's hack foul. Butte had a very long at bat back in the first inning before lining out to Pleasance. Boy, that sounds like a Louisiana name, but it's not even closely spelled to how we spell Butte here. B-O-U-T-T-E would be the uh, South Louisiana spelling. The one, two. Tried Too the changeup, and that one stayed a little bit elevated. Stan's going crazy, but that changeup was too high. Not quite as high as I thought, but it was a little elevated. Now the make it happen pitch, the 2-2 offering. Popped up, this will be not playable. By the way, the University of Houston has 47,000 students. Wow, that's bigger than LSU. Way bigger. It's the fourth largest university in Texas, though. There are three bigger. Texas, te Texas A&M, and probably UTSA. Is it? That's just my guess. Texas Tech, not Baylor. I wouldn't think Baylor, right? A lot of people in Texas. It's a big old state. Takes you two days to drive through it. The 3-2 pitch. Grounded up the middle, and that will produce a run. Chafin threw it over the middle of the plate, and Butte sent it back from whence it came. And Shelby Smith scores the first run of the game for the Cougars. A clutch RBI single up the middle by the leadoff hitter. That's a good battle by Butte. And the first hit of the game results in the first run for the Cougars. That walk to lead off the inning. Come back to haunt you every proved, time. Proved to be very costly. A walk, some. a sacrifice bunt, a ground out, and an RBI single by Butte. And the Cougars have manufactured their first run. We well, got a good sacrifice bunt to move the runner over to second. Kennedy Thomas. Pleasance will make the play herself as she goes to the left. 
Thomas ends the inning on a six unassisted fielder's choice. And Houston comes within a run on an RBI single by Butte. It's two to 600. So good stuff early offensively for the Tigers with this veteran lineup. And here is Taylor Pleasance. Steve, right one from Shelby Smith. Shelby Smith had a better inning in the second inning. Pleasance fly to left field last time. And she pulls this one on the ground foul. By the way, Yvette, during the timeout break, we got updated information. I mean, people are helping us to be accurate. And we were told that Houston now has the third largest enrollment among public institutions in Texas. And wow. North Texas, North Texas is now number four. Wow. UNT, University of North Texas in Denton. Denton, you're right. So it's Texas. Who's number one? Texas, Texas. A&M is first. Oh, okay. Then Texas? Uh-huh. Yeah, one, Texas A&M, it's like 50,000, right? It's a city. Seventy-four thousand students at Texas A&M. That's a lot of Aggies. Fifty-two thousand at Texas in Austin. The two-two to Pleasants. She rips it in the left center field. This will go to the wall on a couple of hops. Pleasants stretches out with those long legs and stands at second base with another extra base hit. That's her second hit. double of the season. She hits lasers. The ball just jumps off of her bat. And you're right, those long legs. She eats up some ground, doesn't she? She does. Here's Gutierrez, who had a base hit last time. Smith to Gutierrez. LSU's very first shortstop was almost that tall. Tara Asbill, I'm not quite sure how tall she was, but Tara Asbill and Taylor Pleasance have to be the tallest shortstops in this program's history. One strike to Gutierrez. Now two strikes. Smith has pumped in a couple on the inside part of the plate. Smith working ahead with two strikes and Pleasance at second base. Nobody out. The pitch. Check swing. She spoils it. She wasn't fully committed, but she knew it was close enough. Yeah. I think she might have recognized that it was a ball. Pleasance hits it deep to right center field. That's and this ball is down against the bottom yes. of the wall. Gutierrez saving the best for last. So Gutierrez rips it off the right center field wall at the bottom. Taylor Pleasant scores from second base. And Raylan Gutierrez continues to make huge improvements offensively in the 2024 season, she has really come alive and found another gear at the plate. Lynn, she was the nine hole last year. Yep. And now she is batting cleanup and having the best year of her career here. So back to back smashes by Pleasance and Gutierrez. Both of them doubles. Gutierrez with the RBI. And the play made at first base as Ali Newland is hunting early and grounds out. The Tigers are stinging the ball in this inning. Gutierrez able to move to third with one out. Here is Mackenzie Rudity, a dangerous hitter. She walked her first time. I mean, everybody, is on deck. everybody in this lineup is a dangerous hitter now. There's a gap in right center field. The pitch. 
is outside. Three to one, Tigers. They have matched Houston's effort in the top of the inning. He's got that run back. Gutierrez with her 14th RBI of the season on that wall banging double. And that's second on the team behind Pleasance. So event between Pleasance and Gutierrez right now, you've got 35 driven in. The 1-1 one, one pitch. That's over the plate in I'd, the upper part of the zone. I'd say Gutierrez is doing her job protecting Pleasance. Good point. There she is at third base with one out. The one two looped foul that will make the left side and out of play. Two in the first for the Tigers. One in the third for the Cougars and one in the bottom of the inning for LSU a chance to get another one. Took something off put, of that pitch. You got to put it in play with yep. a runner at third. Yep. Can't blow up an inning. That's a good pitch, but she just missed with that changeup. Or off speed. She took something off of that pitch. The 2-2 two -two now coming from Shelby Smith to Mackenzie Ruderty. We will do it at three balls, two strikes. Good job behind the plate by Coleman stopping that ball with a runner at third. That'll be a, a wall back there. That's ball four. So now Hannah Carson has a chance with runners on the corners. James Madison and South Carolina are playing in the third, no score. Alabama shut out UAB 8-0. Alabama also beat Western Carolina 4-1. Virginia Tech defeated Georgia 5-4. Another stunner. And we'll check the others in a minute. The pitch. A strike on the outside edge to Hannah Carson. Texas A&M 10, North Dakota State nothing. That's a final. What do you think the weather in North Dakota is? Burr. burr. Yep, burr. The 0 1 pitch. Smash to center field. This is deep enough to score a run. Here comes the close. throw. It's a close. good throw. Nope. And the slide is in time for the run scoring. Well, that catcher, Coleman. Coleman, the catcher. Yep, Coleman. I know there's been a clarification of obstruction. But she's going to receive this ball way in front of the plate. How's she going to make that tag? You're going to have to find the base runner and get back to the plate to do it. So a sacrifice fly by Carson. Gutierrez sliding in safely. Two in the third to match two in the first for the Tigers. And that's what you call positive at bats. The LSU now leading four to one. Responding with two after Houston scored one in the top of the inning. The 2-0 pitch. Off the mark. Texas A&M beat St. Thomas of Minnesota 10 to 2. Mississippi State and Oklahoma delayed. UCF is trailing Missouri 3 0 in the third. 
And no score on North Carolina State tonight. Did they play? We'll find out. We've got to do that for Lindsay. I think your phone will let us know in a moment. <laughs> Former LSU coach Lindsay Leftwich, oh, the new head coach of that school. Nelly. High fly ball out to the warning track and caught on the dirt by Thomas. So we got to call out one score that we missed. Sure. North Carolina State beat Albany 9 zip. Well, they had weather delays, as I understand it, as well, but they hung on and fought through the bad weather and won it 9 nothing over Albany. Good job by our ex-LSU coach and Northwestern State Demon, Lindsey Leftwich. Here's a little number on a try to get out of the way effort. They're off to a pretty good start, North Carolina State. You know, and Beth Arena talked about how that first game this year was the first time she'd ever coach without Lindsay Leftwich being at uh, first base. You know, it's truly a good cop, bad cop relationship. Here's Taria Coleman who struck out in the second. The 0 1 pitch coming from Raylan Chafin. You know, that you mentioned a couple of innings ago that, that, that Chafin actually looked sharper here in the first three innings of this game than she did in the last three innings of the game which preceded this one. And Chafin got a save for that effort and, and pitched solidly. But I, I think you're right. There's a little more giddy up on the pitches. Her control has been good. At least she's induced swinging strikes. And, and to this point, she does look sharper than she did in the earlier game. She might have needed to just warm up a little bit. And you know, sometimes I, I used to send people back to the bullpen if they didn't start off sharp. Ouch. Just as we were singing her praises. That one comes inside and gets a good piece of Coleman. L listen to this. That sounded like a home run contact. That's that hard plastic shield on her elbow. Thank goodness. And it's a good thing it was there, right? Thank goodness for that. Nita comes up swinging. Chafin just blew that ball past her. On paper as well, this is a fantastic hitting Houston team. And Chafin has done very well to this point, working on a one hit, one run game. LSU leading with a pair in the first and a pair in the third. This is an offensive conference, and the Tigers gather on the infield. LSU and Houston will do battle tomorrow. That'll be about 4 o'clock. It won't be early. And then Austin P will be the final opponent for LSU tomorrow in the game following the Tigers and the Cougars. The governors. The 0-1. Uh-uh. One ball, one strike. Hall of Fame coach Yvette Girard, Lynn Rollins with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for the support over the years. Yvette, we've been together now side by side for 13 consecutive seasons. Unbelievable. It's been wonderful. Unbelievable. We, and we, we've had so much fun. And we hope we impart that to our audience. Bring our local flavor to a national broadcast. That's hit the other way sharply and through to left field. So Nita, after looking a little bit overmatched on a pitch or two, gathers herself and blasts it through on the left side. Well, Coach Vesley called a timeout and talked to her. And as you said, she kind of gathered herself and looked like a better hitter with that swing. 
So two on with one out. And now the tying run comes to the plate in Jasmine Rollin. She was the third strikeout victim of Chafin in her first at bat in the second inning. Hitting 395 right now. That's trouble as Houston will collect at least one run. It rolls all the way to the wall. The second Cougar coming around and we've got a one run game. Jasmine Rollin splits Newland and Briggs with a drive that rolled to the wall in left center field and here come the Cougars. I mean, it's like deja vu all these games. That's her third double of the season. It collects a couple of runs. Tigers jump out, and here come the Cougars. Well, Chafin running into some difficulties here in the fourth inning. She got the first batter, then plunked Coleman, then a base hit by Nita, and a two-run double by Rollin. And the bullpen is active for the Tigers. Cougars stop swinging at balls in their eyes. Burzon and Casanova are both warming up for the Tigers. Here's the opposing pitcher, Shelby Smith. She walked to open the last inning and scored. That's a strike on the outer part of the plate. Chafin is chunking 67 miles an hour. Right now, the lead is one with the tying run at second base and only one out. That's out of play. Shelby Smith is in graduate school from Friendswood, Texas. Jordy Wilkins is on deck. A runner at second base, two runs home. That's low and away. Seems like LSU's involved in these games, game after game after game. Started in Clearwater. The 2-2. A call third strike. Again, a bit of an off-speed pitch. And Chafin has thrown that with some confidence. Oh, she pulled the string on that one. Bergeron done a good job back there, not moving too much to receive that pitch. That's her fifth strikeout, her first since she fanned the side in the second. And here is Jordy Wilkins. First name spelled J-O-R-D-E-E. -E. 72 pitches in the fourth inning. And there are no weak spots offensively in this Houston lineup. Zero. One through nine. This is a tremendously talented offensive team. Balls tonight have been hit very sharply. Two strikes on Wilkins. And she burns the outside edge to leave Rollin at second base. Back-to-back -back strikeouts after Rollin produced the two-out dump. You're gonna see a drop, a curve, and a change. Most of her pitches are spinning down. She's gonna throw in the, wow, the 58 to 52 with her changeup. So that's not much of a difference. Paris Lehman out of Tupelo, Mississippi. She started one game. Her earn run average is very impressive. 1.13 in 18 and two thirds innings. Only three walks. 
And she transferred from Nickel State in Thibodeau. I thought that name kind of sounded familiar. So everything should be spinning down. So Shelby Smith went three innings, allowed six hits and four runs. She walked three batters. One of them came around to score. That's a strike. And the starter Smith did not strike out a batter. Here's the 3 2 pitch to the youngster Daniel, who hit the ball solidly on a line to the second baseman last time. She hits this one off the pitcher's glove into center field, a base hit. Daniel has had two good swings at the bottom of the order. I think that's three that we've seen so far. But you're right, in this game, two really good swings. A very controlled swing. She met the softball solidly in the middle with the fat part of the bat. And here is Dan, uh, Danica Coffey, who has homered and singled. She opened the game in the first for the Tigers with a blast into the right center field bleachers. Briggs is on deck. See that change up. That's a good one. That is a fine one. Coffee's average has ascended over the last four or five games to 367. Yeah, she started off a little slow. She was down in that 280, 290 mark. Friday, Saturday, didn't have great games, but she's had some good games today. You know, but of course, when we talk about her, we're talking about three for four or four for four. Laura King is calling balls and strikes. Stephen Gould is the uh, first base umpire. And Bobby DeMaio is uh, working the other corner. Is that change up? Seems it's not a great variance of speed. Six mile an hour difference. We've got to change that shortstop. Lorenzo is out. And Mandy Esselman is in. So Brooke Lorenzo has left the game at shortstop. And Mandy Esman is the new shortstop. Scouting report on Lehman is that she will throw strikes. And has not walked many batters, just only three in about less than about 19 innings of work. Coffee at the plate following the single up the middle by Daniel. Two balls, two strikes to the veteran third baseman. Goffey sends this one out toward left. Kennedy Thomas doesn't have to move much, and she gathers it for the out. Up steps Briggs, who has walked and scored and lined the left. Down 
There goes Daniels. She got a great release from first base and stole second easily. We haven't seen a lot of stolen bases. We haven't seen a lot of the youngsters get a lot of playing time yet, but a couple of them have been in particular, and Daniel is one of them, appear very capable of uh, contributing this year, no. especially in, uh, in certain situations. Again, that's a name that I was given to, you know, of the freshmen who maybe can contribute this year, but the team is so senior laden. Somebody got hurt or sit, he's out. So the mic was not working, but uh, you saw the signal. That was an early release from first base. Good pick up by the Houston coaches. Good appeal, worked in their favor. She just a little bit too soon. Not much, but you see the distance between the runner and the base before the ball was released. No wonder she stole it so easily. She is quick, though. So that'll be an out stealing. And two gone, and Briggs will bat with a count of one strike and nobody on base. Yvette, I think she would have been safe even if she would have held the bag a little longer and not gone early. Yep. She's got some hops on her way to first, uh, second base. I believe you are correct, sir. Two strikes on Briggs, two outs, bases empty. One run game in the fourth. Houston is 11 and one. LSU is 10 and 0. Houston with an overhaul, overhaul of their team and staff. After kind of a rough year last year. The 0-2, not to Briggs' liking. Pleasance is on deck. Last year record for the Cougars was 20 and 30. For somebody that was on a national championship team and a big part of it, an All-American, that's hard to go to sleep at night. You're talking about the head coach. Absolutely. Kristen Vesley. See Nadia Taylor there with the red hat. She was an All-American in Texas, born in Louisiana. Tried to recruit her, but she ended up at Texas. Coaches don't forget those things, oh, do no. they? <laughs> the Tigers and the Cougars in a one-run game. She also is still playing pro ball. Athletes Unlimited. The 2-2 pitch to Briggs is outside. Briggs is going to do her best to extend the inning and bring Pleasance to the plate. Eighty-eight waits. Lehman to the plate and Briggs earns the walk. Sometimes you are walked, sometimes you earn a walk, and that's what Briggs did after she fell behind two strikes. Yep, that was the eighth pitch of that at bat. So Pleasance has flied to the left and doubled and scored. She smacked one to left center last time and wound up at second base. Here we go. He is trying to work that outside corner and just missing. Pleasance batting 414 as she stands in. Three homers, a team leading 21 RBI. That's one of the leading numbers in the SEC as well. That floater drops out of the zone. It's 2 and 0. It's a drop ball, but didn't throw it for a strike. Paris Lehman by way of Nickel State University in the circle. And she comes back and finds the outside part of the plate with a strike. Two outs Briggs at first base.
Riggs will be away on contact. Three and one. Gutierrez is on deck. And she's had a big night already with a base hit and a double and an RBI and a run scored. Here we go at three and one. Off speed inside. The inning continues with two outs. You have just as dangerous a hitter for the Tigers stepping up. That's the eighth time that Pleasance has been walked this year. That's second on the team. And I bet you just go back and wonder what the situation would be had Daniel not been a little bit early leaving first base. Yep. You only have one out. That's nubbed right back to the circle. Lehman jumps on it and gets the out at with a leadoff home run in the first inning for the Tigers and also a single. And we play on here in a one run game with the fifth inning in progress right now in Baton Rouge with Hall of Fame coach Yvette Girard. I'm Lynn Rollins. Hall of Fame Lynn Rollins. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Still working for my NIL deal. Then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, found out NIL stands for not interested, Lynn. <laughs> Good one. I didn't even know I could do an Elvis imperson impersonation. Thank you. Thank I you still, very much. I, I still, I still don't know you can. <laughs> <laughs> the first time was the best. Hulsey suddenly is ahead, three and zero in the count. Chafin in two games today. Now she worked the final three innings in the uh, preceding game against Boise State. And didn't give up anything. Struck out three, got the save. She threw 50 pitches in the first game. She's uh, at 78 right now in the second game as the starter. Not like baseball. It's not like, oh my God, she's throwing too many pitches. Yeah. The 3 1. That's there. He's worked her, her way back after starting 3-0. and Halsey's been at the plate once. She grounded out to the second baseman, Daniel. I think she's a pink girl, don't you, don't you know? That glove has got a lot of pink on it. Oh, that one got hung up. Might yeah, have hit her hip, she, huh? She did. Didn't clear her hip, hit it. So that is only the second walk that Chafin has allowed. However, the first one was the leadoff batter in the third, and she came around to score. How many times does it prove? A bunch. Work ahead, stay ahead, don't lose your head. That's what the old coach said on her dying day. Yep. Those walks will kill you. Put it on your tombstone. A strike to Butte. She looks like Ooh, she might want to poke a bunt. Daniel would have been there. They had the runner at first hung up to a little bit too big a lead. Not too big. She's still there. One ball, one strike on Layer Butte. She has lined out to Pleasance and had an RBI single in the third. Chafin winds and brings it. Way outside. There is bullpen activity I feel for like the she, Tigers. She hits her hip more than just that ball she let loose a while ago. And that is Burzon again. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Butte got jammed and fouls it away. By the way, Yvette, certainly it has nothing to do with the outcome of this game, but it does have everything to do with the outcome of the tournament and the hospitality and the uh, 
ability for LSU and all of the dozens and dozens and dozens of people involved. Ground ball right side, second base. We got a mess. To cover, we got a mess. Do it. We got the freshman that kind of got caught in no man's land, didn't cover the bag. So that's going to be an infield hit for Butte. But let me finish the. the you didn't thought. think there could be a play? Of course, I know that's because. Well, let's take a look at this. The second baseman is shaded and over. She's so far, deep. yeah. She's so far at second. And that was a wise decision yep. by Chafin to hold yep, on to you're it. You're right. The you're last right. thing you want to do is throw it beyond the first baseman. I think she's telling Tarina, I just didn't want to throw it. She wasn't there. So here comes Bur to two win on the home run in the tenth by Taylor Pleasance. She's worked 28 innings, only five walks. That's excellent. 33 strikeouts. That ERA really coming down after that weekend in uh, Clearwater, who's jacked up every pitcher's ERA. Burzon is the, she throws the hardest and has the best movement on the staff. Her best pitch is her drop ball at 67 miles an hour. She can throw a two seam fastball at 70 and her change is 54. No question, she is the ace of the staff. She is an All-American, the first freshman All-American since Carly Hoover. One ball, one strike on Kennedy Thomas. 0 for 2 tonight, a strikeout and a fielder's choice. Chafin allowed three runs on only four hits. She walked a couple and one of them came across to score. She struck out six, but they came very early. She struck out four of the first six hitters and then came back with a pair of strikeouts in the fourth with runners in scoring position. But she has allowed a walk and an infield hit here in the fifth, and it's time for Burzon. Burzon is a New Yorker out of Buffalo. But went to high school in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The one, two, grounded to Gutierrez. Flips it to the shortstop, back to first. Oh, close there, but one whale of a play started by Gutierrez. How pretty was that? How pretty was that turn by Gutierrez? And she did it so confidently and so naturally. No hesitation at all. Look at this. It's a good hard shot to her. She and gets back gets to back. her bag. And she is safe. Yep. She being Thomas, who hustles down the line with good speed. I mean, she just turned and fired to the bag, knowing well, that Pleasance would be there. Butte is out, forced at second. That was just a heck of a save there by Bergeron. Halsey is at third. Thomas on the fielder's choice is at first. Two outs. Here's Cantu. Or make it one out. And here's Cantu. And there's a strike as the Tigers are trying to dig in and prevent that tying run from scoring at third base with one out. The infield is at normal depth. Cantu has popped up to second base and grounded back to the circle. One ball, two strikes. There's a look at the corner in, the corner runners. Thomas at first, she's swift. Hulsey at third. Coleman is on deck. The one-two pitch. Oh, that was a defensive swing. And that is a huge strikeout for Burzon. Absolutely, came in and has done her job. Got a ground ball out, and now a strikeout. So she has fought off a couple of attempts, and now there's still work to be done as Taria Coleman comes to the plate. She has struck out. She was hit by a pitch in the fourth and scored on the double by Rollin a couple of batters later. And she's hit by this pitch. How big was that ground ball out? So Coleman is plunked in back-to-back -back plate appearances. And the bases are full of Cougars. Again, that got her on that, that plastic elbow guard. Holsey at third. Thomas at second base representing the go-ahead run. And Coleman at first. 
Michaela Nita has struck out and singled and scored. Infielder's job is to obviously try and make a play, but if they can't, knock the ball down. So the 0 1 pitch. Runner at second doesn't score. Steve right. 0 oh, 2, two outs, bases loaded. LSU fighting from the edge of a cliff with a one run lead. The pitch. Off the mark a little bit. Tigers are clawing at that edge of the cliff. Trying to hold on to a 4-3 advantage. There's a Cougar on every base. Battle of the Cats. And the two out pitch with a count of one, two. A call third strike. Burns on with a brilliant performance. So everybody gets their five games in a weekend. Allie Newland, Mackenzie Rudity, and Hannah Carson are scheduled a bat in the fifth inning. Paris Lehman is working her second complete inning of relief. Lehman in relief of Shelby Smith, who went three innings. You know, Yvette, we heard the uh, traditional take me out to the ball game song during the, uh, the stretch time here between innings and the fifth. I'll bet there are quite a few people who don't know the, orig the origin of that song. That's ripped hard, but foul. It was written in the very early 1900s by two guys who were friends riding on a subway train in New York City. They looked out the window of the train. They saw a sign that said Giants Baseball Today, you know, a placard advertising the fact that the New York Giants were in town for an afternoon game. They'd never seen a baseball game in their life, and they wrote that song before they got off the subway. That's crazy, Isn't what, it? A, what, what a story. And I don't have their names, but that is a true rendering of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Wow. And, and it actually turned into a Broadway play at one point. <laughs> That's a fascinating story. You're not gonna get that on another broadcast. No, you're not. Not tonight anyway. Forget about it. But that's always intrigued me, how two guys who had never, never seen, seen a, a game. game. Yeah. And they, they allegedly were writing it about a girl they were interested in. Take me out to the ball game. Okay. So anyway, I've always been intrigued by that story. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Newland. It's a great story. How many times have you heard that song? I'll bet it's exactly the same number of times you've heard the Star Spangled Banner. You're probably right. At the ballpark anyway. Well, yes and no, because you kind of just sing that song sometimes. The but three, you're right. The 3-2 pitch hit sharply but foul. Well, considering as a little girl, I, every summer I spent this vacation in Houston at Colt 45 Stadium or the Dome, Astrodome, watching baseball games a lot. I caught a foul ball there in the Astrodome once. You remember Robin Roberts, the pitcher? He was in the final stages of his career with Houston. Don't really remember that name. I know the anchor, Robin Roberts. My brother caught a ball at uh, Colt 45 Stadium. Mm. And I think it was Jimmy Wynn's ball. Now yeah. you know him. Newland gets a board. That was a really nice job by Butte of smothering this at second base, but no chance at all to uh, make a play at first. And Newland is on base, and the Tigers would love to stretch this one-run lead. Newland took that ball off the plate and kind of drove it up the middle. Shows you how strong she is. You know, I've still got that ball that I caught. I think I was 12 years old. That's cool. Oh, that's something, yeah, you, you'll never get rid of, or you shouldn't. 12, then it had to be Cold 45 Stadium, I would think. Maybe I was a little older than 12. Yeah. I remember that I was tackled from behind by some big guy who tried yeah. to broke my glasses, too. Oh, sure. 
make a fool of themselves for a ball. Oh, he made a fool of me. Why? You're a kid. Yeah, I was a kid, but, you know, I came up with a flat head after that. <laughs> Here's the 1 1 pitch to Ruderty. When did the dome open? 64, 65? I'm not real sure. It was the first year, I know that. Okay. That cowboy for the home run, uh -huh. roping the steer. Mm -hmm. The shots going off. Oh, I was. I mean, we never went to Disney, so that was like my Disney. Oh, yeah. So just pray for a home run so oh, I could yeah. see that. And it was the Strohs, and they weren't good, so we didn't see it much. Safe at first base. That's Rudity hustling down the line, not taking anything for granted. The Tiger dugout is happy about it. And they got their own cheer for safe. Look at this. This good is job. the first baseman. And indeed safe. Good job by Rudity. Indeed Hustling safe. down there. Hustling down there. A pair of infield hits. The Tigers have two aboard for Hannah Carson. Something brewing for the Tigers. Carson has fly to right and has an RBI sacrifice fly to center field. Oh, she'd like to have that pitch back. That was hittable. Carson batting 412. She's driven in eight. LSU leading by one in the bottom of the fifth inning against this very dangerous Houston team. Nine hits for the Tigers, only four for the Cougars, but it's a one-run game in favor of LSU. Macy Bergeron is on deck. Here's the 1-1 pitch. She tried to float one in, it misses. You college softball fans, call a buddy, tell him we've got a fine finish working here in Baton Rouge on the SEC ESPN Network. Have him dial it up. 2-1 pitch. Came inside. That's fouled off the hitter. It's a foul ball. A beautiful night in Baton Rouge. It's been a beautiful day. And the weather is supposed to be a duplicate tomorrow. We'll take it. And we'll have baseball on the air for you on Sunday. A one o'clock game between LSU and Stony Brook. That's a base hit to right. There's a hesitation around third. Now the base runners will try to advance after the ball was bobbled in right. And LSU on three consecutive base hits indeed gets an insurance run. Yeah, Beth held up the runner. And then when the bobble occurred, because you have nobody out, you don't want to make an out at home plate. Blow up the inning. That's going to be a single and an error to allow the runner to score from third and Rudity to take third base. So a base hit, no RBI, a base hit and an error. And the Tigers have moved out in front five to three. And we've got palaver all over the park. I've never heard that word until I've been broadcasting with you. Who is the runner for Carson? Still nobody out. Bergeron has hit a humpback liner to short. And also flied out in her second at bat. So we are told uh, by one of your buddies that the uh, Astrodome opened in 1965. So I think that was the year I went. Let's get back to softball here. 5-3 LSU leading with a clutch run in the fifth. 
And a big opportunity to get some more. Runners on the corners, nobody out. Bergeron needs to make contact. One ball, one strike. The Tigers with 10 hits and five runs. The Cougars with four hits and three runs. Newland with an infield hit. Rudity followed with an infield hit. Carson single to right. The ball was bobbled by the right fielder. It allowed Newland to score. And the 2-1 pitch to the sophomore catcher Bergeron. The Lee outfield is deep and straight away. And Lehman's falling behind hitters early now. And it's three and one. Sierra Daniel is on deck. Houston, 11 wins, one loss. The Tigers, 10 wins, no losses. That's popped up on the infield. Nobody will be able to advance. And it's squeezed by Butte. So Bergeron, after getting ahead in the count, pops it up for out number one. Here's Daniel. She's had a couple of good at bats. She has lined out to second base and had a base hit last time. She's had two good swings and is one for two. Got runners on first and third here. Again, you've got to make contact, preferably on the ground somewhere. Or deep enough in the outfield for a sacrifice fly. Just be a positive at bat. Rudity represents the second run of the inning. She's at third with one out. And Gilio, the pinch runner, is at first. This will do she it. She does her job. It drops into right center field for a base hit. Another and, run scores. And she can scoot. Gilio rounds third and is going to go back. And Sierra Daniel. She's impressive. She has delivered a couple of base hits, and she's hit the ball well three times. She made a good defensive play. So a big night for the youngster, Sierra Daniel, as she just lays the barrel of the bat on the ball and drops it into right center field. That's Wilkins hustling over from center field, but the Tigers get another run on the RBI single. And LSU now has doubled up Houston. It's a 6-3 game. She showed some pop and then she showed some touch. So it's Gilio at third. Daniel moved up on the throw. She's at second base. Four hits in the inning for the Tigers. are going to give her a double. Mm. She'll take it. This is chopped off at the plate by Coffee. LSU has reached the 11 hit mark. Coffee has homered, singled, and fly to left. Two balls and a strike. Deuces have been wild in the odd innings for LSU. Two in the first, two in the third, and two in the fifth. Coffee chops it, and that's a foul ball. And she's definitely trying to put the ball on the ground. Let's see if she swings away here. Two balls, two strikes, two runs home, one out, two in scoring position. This at bat is very big for the Tigers. A chance to move the lead even larger. And here it comes. Coffee takes it for ball three. Almost snuck that inside, which is a very good pitch to a slapper running through that pitch. The count is full with one out. Two Tigers in scoring position. Coffee nubs it foul again.
Six runs, 11 hits for the Tigers. Three runs, four hits for Houston. Coffee spoils another one. Raylan Chafin started in the circle for LSU. She went three innings. Make it four innings. And Burzon came on and quenched a bonfire in the fifth. Here's the 3 2 pitch again to Coffee. Smashed on a line to left. That's down for a base hit. The throw goes to third. No action there. And the Tigers have scored another one as Coffee goes the other way with her third hit of the game and a very big RBI. She worked that count until she could get a pitch that she could drive. And she said, forget about trying to put the ball on the ground. It looks like the Cougars are just not going to make any kind of move in the circle. There is no one in the bullpen. Even Lehman some work. So Coffee is at first base after her third hit of the game and her second RBI. She's on her way to second. She'll make it without a throw. <laughs> Newland and Rudity and Gilio have scored. There's a runner at third, a runner at second. And a chop up the middle. Tough play. Got out on a very nifty play, a close play at first base. Heck of but, a play. But it's an RBI. Exactly. For Briggs. And the Tigers now have moved with four in the inning to an 8-3 lead. Tigers showing some speed, showing the short game, showing some Gap power. Lineup is looking good offensively. So Daniel has scored in the inning. Coffee moved to third with two outs. And here's Pleasance. Pleasance wraps that one right up the middle. Another RBI base hit for Taylor Pleasance. And the Tigers have erupted with one, two, three, four, five, six hits in the inning and five runs. And Taylor Pleasance makes it a 9-3 game. Not a lot of runners left on base here. Everybody's taking their turn to knock in RBIs. Two in the first, two in the third, and five in the fifth. As for the Tigers. See, there is no one in the bullpen. Here's Gutierrez. Pleasant has a double and a run scored and an RBI single. Gutierrez has a single and an RBI double and a run scored. Betserina is going to make a switch. Oh, she's going to pinch run for Pleasant's. So we'll see who pops out of that dugout with the batting helmet on. That is. That's Savannah Bedell, the freshman. So Bedell is the pinch runner for Pleasants. Two and zero to Raylene Gutierrez. Seven of the nine Tigers in the lineup have had at least one base hit tonight.
two outs, Bedell at first. That's a strike to Gutierrez. You know, Yvette, this has been a lineup with contributions from a lot of people tonight. But I'm especially impressed with the play of Sierra Daniel at the bottom of the order offensively and a couple of plays defensively. It's like a solid. She'll have to probably wait her turn. Car Carly Petty's a senior. Some of these young, great-looking freshmen just have to wait their turn here. But very capable of replacements, and as I said, in case of injury or illness. Well, she hasn't played much, but... She has looked completely comfortable and confident. And I made a mistake earlier when I thought she got caught out of position, but she was just playing up the middle. How about that play by How the second that? baseman, Butte? How about that? She turns that sink to the lineup defensively at shortstop. LSU has wins over Nichols, Memphis, Pittsburgh a couple of times, Memphis again, Georgia Tech, Northwestern, Oklahoma State, a ranked team, Boise State a couple of times, and seeking to defeat 11-1 Houston tonight. Jasmine Rollin at the plate. The Cougars have defeated Colgate, Indiana State, Rutgers, UTSA, Nichols, UMass, Northwestern State. And their loss was to Rutgers, 10-2. That's been the only setback. They've been involved in seven run rule games already as Houston with that potent attack. One ball, two strikes on Rollin. Strength of schedule, however, has not been fabulous. No, it has fabulous. not. No, it has not. That's going to be trouble, I think. Pleasance, safe. What a stretch. She's I mean, good. it's Inspector Gadget at first base. She has, she has improved so much. I mean, Raylene Gutierrez. I love watching is, her is play. phenomenal defensively at first base. And I said trouble because it just took too many hops, even with Pleasance. One, two, and just slow, slow and hops. Pleasance. There aren't many first basemen who can make that play and hang on to the bag. Nope. I mean, that is Inspector Gadget at first base. I love good defense. Rollin with the infield hit. That's the first safety off of Burzon. She burns in a couple of strikes to Shelby Smith. Or excuse me, Mandy Esman. Esman batting for the first time. Smith, the starting pitcher, had a couple of at-bats. She walked and scored and struck out. Here's a throw. It's a good one. Out at second base. Wow, and that was, I thought it was a good read in the dirt, but. Bergeron with a slick play behind the plate. How about that throw from the sophomore? She got comes up arm. gunning it, puts it right it. on the bag. Good tag by Pleasance. And Pleasance got down in the dirt to get it. That was well done by Bergeron and Pleasance. A That's terrific throw by the sophomore. Three nice defensive plays here in a matter of minutes by the Tigers. Stretch at first, the throw from home, the tag at second. Now the one, two, high and away. Don't forget these teams will battle again. Four-ish, it, it won't be before that, that's for sure. But four o'clock schedule the first game tomorrow. 
And then the Tigers will take on Austin P in the nightcap. They will play the final two games of the tournament involving LSU tomorrow. Four o'clock against Houston. And then uh, at the conclusion of that one, it'll be Austin P. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Nine three LSU. Daniel picks it up, throws it to first base. Gutierrez is waiting. Houston has four outs with which to work. Here is Jordy Wilkins. She has a sacrifice bunt and struck out against Chafin. Chafin fanned six in three in four innings. Guess where Sierra Daniel is from? Help me. West. Out west. Well, that narrows it down to about 20 states. <laughs> Come on, that, that's really good in softball, but not, not me, the big one. Give me a hint. Okay, not California? Not the big one. Washington? Grand Canyon. Ah. A strikeout for Wilkins. And a strikeout recorded by. I guess the Houston staff has decided she is going to finish this game because there is no one in the bullpen. And LSU got to her. She's kind of a head scratcher. LSU got to her for six hits in the fifth. Giving her some work, I suppose. Well, she had really impressive numbers in about. 20 innings of relief coming into this game. But the Tigers have roughed her up. Newland and Rudity and Carson and Daniel and Caffey and Pleasance all had base hits last inning. How far will this travel? Way, way back. It's an opposite field home run. You can puck her up and kiss that baby goodbye. Home run number two, and the LSU Tigers extend their lead. So much power from Newland. She just generates it from those powerful legs that she has. And, and you know what? Most of her home runs are oppos. Well, she has a three base hit night working and two runs batted in. A run scoring single in the first, a base hit in the fifth, and a home run in the sixth. And she gets the crown. The, you know, the, the, the softball team I heard went over to a gymnastics meet, and so they've adopted the crown just like the gymnasts wear when they stick a landing. By the way, speaking of gymnastics, LSU and Florida did battle down in Gainesville tonight. And Florida bested LSU 198.150 to 197.950. That's a very decent score for LSU, but Florida was a little bit better. Here's a shot deep to right. It's over the right fielder's head. Might have a play at second. Oh, no. Rude can hustle down there to second. He That's hustled down to first the last time. and She's been on base four times, two walks. An infield hit and this double. And she pounds it over the right fielder's head as it takes one hop and bounces against the wall. But the Tigers with a pair of extra base hits in this inning. A homer by Newland, a double by Ruderty. Just like in any sport, hard to win in the opponent's gym, huh? And it's going to be. Maddox McKee is the hitter. She
She's from Montgomery, Texas, a freshman. And of course, she's a lefty. Well, of course. Strike Beth one. Beth Tarina and her staff have found the lefty universe. Lehman to McKee. That's high. One bright spot, well, several bright spots, but a, a particularly bright spot for LSU in gymnastics. Aaliyah Finnegan had a 10 on the floor exercise. What about Haley Bryant? I don't know if she won the uh, another all around or not. I'm told she did not. She finished second, but I think she's still going to maintain her number one position in the country as an all arounder. But the Tigers falling in gymnastics even though the score is pretty darn good. 197.950 for LSU. Florida was a winner, 198.150. But that sport is unique, a bit oh, because you yeah. really don't compete against the opposition. You compete against perfection. And all of the ratings are founded strictly on your scores, your average scores. And you, you, could, be, you could be without a win and still be in you know, among the leading schools in the country. Yeah, that's if crazy. your scores are right. sufficient. So it's it's kind of like golf, you know? I mean, you're, you're playing against par. Trying to think of what other sport you don't have to win, but if your scores are so high. Hot dog eating. I can't hardly watch that contest. <laughs> well, it's fascinating to me to see somebody inhale 70 hot dogs in what? Whatever it is, 10 minutes, five minutes. I mean, I've had a platter of catfish. I think it's a little gross. <laughs> you know, today. Yeah. Here's Jaden Lanou or Lano. So it's Leno batting for Bergeron. Lehman against Leno. Beth Torina able to go deep into her bench in the latter innings. There's a strike down the middle. 10 to 3 LSU over Houston. 15 base hits against this Houston pitching staff. Leno is out of Marietta, Georgia. A lot of good softball comes out of there. That's roped up the middle. It's down for a base hit. Ooh, <laughs> that was close at second. How about all these freshmen coming up and getting base hits? Well, they want to make the most of their playing time. Yep, they don't get much, so. He just stands and swings. So here is Sierra Daniels. She's been impressive defensively and impressive offensively. She has lined out, singled, and doubled and knocked in a run and scored. Getting the start at second base tonight. Stee, right? She could end this game with a base hit. Still nobody out. That's a little bit tall. Yeah, 
LSU needs one more run to close out Houston. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Smashed up the middle off the pitcher. She recovers and gets the force at home. That ball was knocked down by Lehman, and she was able to recover and turn it into a force out. So here's Coffee now. Danica has had a good night at the top of the order. Three base hits. She opened things with a first inning home run, then singled in the second, flied out in the fourth, and singled in a run and scored in the fifth. And the Tigers are still one run short of closing out this game in six innings. The 0 1. Fouled off the left side. No play on that. These teams will battle again at 4 o'clock or thereabouts. It won't be before 4. Tomorrow, we'll have it for you right here on the SEC ESPN network. We also will have the Nightcap between LSU and Austin P. And that'll be the final game of the night tomorrow. So a late afternoon, early evening doubleheader coming your way on the SEC ESPN network tomorrow. LSU in Houston, LSU and Austin P. Let's see if they call the infield fly rule in effect. It is the right fielder who comes on. And there are two outs. Try to get that ball a little bit deeper with the runner at third. Here's Sierra Briggs. She's been on base twice via walk. She's lined out to left and has an RBI ground out. Ball one. That change up stays high. It's kind of stuck, stuck in her hands. The 2-0 pitch, grounded to the right side, and the out recorded at first base. The Tigers leave, the base is loaded. This is Pleasance, backs up, makes the long throw, and the long stretch by Gutierrez, and there's one out. We say it over and over again, there's not many female shortstops in the country that can make this play without really taking a step and throwing the ball. That's the arm strength of Pleasance. And here is the top of the order in and Buto. And she's throwing that she, ball from the hole. Buto is able to stroke it into right. That's her third consecutive base hit. It's the sixth hit of the night for Houston. Buto has three of them at the top of the order. And Kennedy Thomas is next. She's 0 for 3. Ooh, that hit her helmet, huh? Or her bat. I guess it hit her bat. Into the bat. You can see the elbow protector on her lead arm. I thought it hit her helmet at first. 
Cougars are still swinging up there. Oh, yeah, they come to crank, don't they? Oh, yeah. The 0-2 by Burzon, chopped toward the right side. They get the out at second base. Sierra Daniel just looks so smooth there, doesn't Good she? Good fundamental softball. Get the lead runner. Put it in your back pocket by Taylor Pleasance because you got no play at first. I thought Daniel might get the out at first base and don't worry about it at second, but she was very confident, very poised and in right throwing it right to the chest of, uh, of Pleasance. Well, and the play's right there in front of you, so I thought she made the correct decision. Oh, no doubt. But I just yeah, thought you're she right. Might do the super safe play and at it, first base. Yeah, you're right. You, you want to make sure you always get an out. You got a, you know, seven run lead. You need outs. Here's Cantu. Sends it in the air to center field. Briggs is there, moving to her left to squeeze it, and the LSU Tigers have another double win victory.